Hey guys, Bill back at you again with another video. Today we're going to be taking another look at the Gorilla Glue photo period, six weeks into flower, and we're also going to be feeding her. Okay guys, so I already have a video out there of my feeding mixture, and uh, I talk about how often I feed. So today I'll, I want to take it one step further I want to show you guys how I actually feed the plants okay first off let's take a look at this girl and see how she's doing okay so there she is uh, I didn't remove my fan this time but I did turn it off uh, let's take a close look here alright first off I wanna talk about this the yellowing leaves on the bottom now she is six weeks into flower if you're new to growing and you're six weeks into flower you only got a couple weeks left then this is nothing to worry about. Uh, as plants get older and they get closer to the end of their life, uh, they start to drop the bottom leaves, which is, which is perfectly normal. So what I'll do is I'll just go through and pick off any of the ones that are completely yellow. Oops. And we'll chuck them out. Now they're coming off real easy too, so that's how you know. That's how you know they're done with it is when you just give it a slight pull down, and they come off like this. Then you know she's done with it. She's already used it. Now these are all on the bottom. They're not getting much light at all, so. They're really not serving any purpose anyway down here. So clean that off a bit. There's a few left in there. I'll get them later. So besides that, she's looking fantastic. She's building up her colas. Super sticky, super smelly. Now, I mentioned how sometimes the smell can change as it grows. Well, she's already changed in the last week. Uh, she was very, very sweet smelling. Now she's not smelling sweet hardly at all. It's more of the uh, earthy with almost a, a chemical smell. Not a bad smell, mind you, but uh, totally different than what it was a week ago. So you can't always go by what it smells like as she's growing because she could finish totally different. So, uh, yeah, looking really good. Buds are nice and tight. Now the next thing we want to look for is the buds, the calyxes just start swelling. For instance, this one here. Let's see if we can get in here a little closer. It's really hard to see the calyxes because they're so sugar coated. What the buds are is a, uh, a structure of calyxes that are growing together in a, in a mass. Now those calyxes are basically empty seed pods. If she would have got pollinated, each one of those would carry a seed. Now where she didn't, they're empty seed pods. Now as she gets close to the end of her life, those seed pods, those empty seed pods will swell and they'll gain a lot of size and a lot of weight. So that's what should be happening over the next couple of weeks. I would say the next week they should swell up quite a bit. And then they'll have one week left and then she'll come down. So uh, looking really well. Now there's one thing you might notice different. The light. Uh, in my previous video on her, I had, I had two 315 CMHs, one on either side, one here and one over on that side. And then in the middle, I had the TS-1000. Well, the middle was fine. But the, uh, I couldn't get the CMHs up any higher. And the heat and the, the intense light was causing some problems. Uh, you can still see some residual effects of it. Um, the talking of the leaves. When your leaves start to close in like that, like, uh, like a Venus flytrap type look. It's called tacoing. Some people call it other things. I call it tacoing. And uh, that's a sign that it's too much light. It's too much heat. And they're closing up because they can only take in so much, so they close up so as to basically turn the light off. They're telling you to turn the light off. So I had to take them out and uh, 
the next best thing that I had to put in here. Unfortunately, I had to take it out of my other tent, but it'll go back in a couple of weeks when she's done. But uh, we had to bring out the Mars Hydro SP250. Um, it's it's good for a two by four. This is a little bigger than a two by four. Uh, I did, I kind of pulled the branches up a bit, so it's it's a bit away from the wall on either side. So it's probably close to the four feet, maybe four and a half altogether. And she's two and a half feet wide. So um, I think she'll be fine. I'm pretty sure she'll be fine. I changed this on, uh, it was right after my last video of the auto flowers. So that was Sunday. It's been in here for a few days now and I haven't seen any negative effects of it. So uh, I think she'll be fine. The buds are still super tight and and she seems to be doing really well so uh that we're gonna finish her up on that see how it goes so in the other 10 i just have a couple of leds i got the ts 1000 in there of course and i also have the uh perfect works 500 so they can stay under that until until this girl's done and then they'll get the sp250 back but uh anyway so she's looking really good now what i have to do is feed her I just dropped those leaves down there. I will be picking them up. Always pick up your leaves off the floor. We don't want bugs finding nice little hiding places under there. So uh, best to keep it as clean as possible. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to feed her. Now, I feed her every day with runoff. And I use the same mixture. Okay, so we have everything here all set up. One thing I don't have here is my pH tester. It crapped out on me, so... I won't be able to use that. Fortunately, I know what the pH is in my tap water. Uh, it's pretty much always the same, so uh, I know what to add in, but I just suggest that you guys have a pH meter and pH your solution in accordance with your pH meter. So, All right, so we're just going to start up here. I do have a video of this already uh, on my channel, but I did change it a little bit. Now, we have two gallons of fresh tap water here. It is pH at 7. Uh, that's what my tap water comes out at. Uh, I'm on a natural well, so it's good clean water. So what we're going to do is we're going to add main ingredient, which is General Hydroponic Maxi Bloom. And no, I'm not sponsored by, by this company at all. They don't know I exist. So what I'm going to do is, now in my other previous video, I used a heaping scoop. Now I've kind of changed that a little bit. I found sometimes that was a bit too much so I kind of played around and I find about three quarters of this scoop is perfect for about two gallons of water. So that's what I use there. Just very simply add it in. Gonna close that up because I tend to knock things over sometimes. So now we got that in the water. What we're gonna do is you gotta find something big enough um, and give that a good stir. It's a, it's a powder, so it takes a little bit of agitation to get that broken down and dissolve in the water. So, Okay, so as we're, as we're stirring this, um, now this recipe I use for my auto flowers, I use for my photo periods, I use for pretty much everything, for all stages of growth. Now, the only exception is, like this girl, the Gorilla Glue photo period here, uh, she started out on the Maxi Bloom. She started out on this exact recipe um, right up until about two weeks before flower. Now, when that happened, I noticed she could use a little bit more nitrogen. So what I did was I used um, the General Hydroponic uh, Maxi Grow, I believe it is. It's the, uh, the veg newts of this line. So I added, what I did was I used half of that and half of this for the two weeks before I flipped it. And then once I flipped it, I went back to using this exact recipe again. So, so she's pretty much had it her entire life with just that little bit of veg mixed in with it for the two weeks before flower. So, and it seems to work really well. And again, I use this for my auto flowers. Every day, this is what they get. No exceptions. Unless I'm really, really lazy and or something comes up and I just don't have the time, then they just get watered. But that happens very rarely. Okay, so we got that mixed in pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add our whiskey. Uh, just joking, it's not whiskey. Um, 
This is my homemade Kelmig. Uh, I do have a video on that if you want to check that out. I usually use about two teaspoons to a tablespoon um, for this two gallon jug. So, and I, I'm just going to eyeball it. Okay, so we got about a tablespoon there. That's good. Now that's made with uh, with the calcium from the eggshells uh, and the Epsom salts is the magnesium. So everything you need in a cheap little package. I like it. So now we'll just give that a little bit of a mix. Now that's pretty much it. That's that's all. It's very simple. Uh, now the, the only thing left to do is to pH it. Now this is where you would take out your pen, your pH pen, uh, or your probe, whatever you have. Um, strips if you have to use those. I don't recommend those. I find they're so hard to read. Every color looks almost exactly the same. So um, I suggest to uh, get yourself a, a decent pH meter. So this is where you would take your, your reading. Now I know mine's at 7. I don't have my meter working so I can't show you. But uh, that's when you add your pH down. Now I like to use um, or up if you're if you're solution is really low then you'd want to bring it up and mine's high the way I feed uh, every day with runoff it's more like hyd growing hydroponically in this soilless media now I don't recommend this for soil grows but uh, in any soilless media uh, whether it be cocoa coir, uh, peat moss rock wool any of your soilless medias uh, this this method works very well so uh, Anyway, so back to pHing. Uh, I know this is seven, so I know that it's going to take about mm, two teaspoons to a tablespoon to bring it down to about 5.7, 5.8. So I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze that in there. Um, so roughly about a tablespoon. I do like to fluctuate a little bit. Now, one day I might not squirt as much, and, or I might not add as much. And other days I might add a little bit more. The nutrients, they're best used by the plant at a little bit different uh, pH levels. So, so sometimes I'll let it go down to almost 5.5. And other times I'll let it go up to almost 6. But uh, I like to keep it around 5.7, 5.8 for the most part. And just let it drift every now and then. Okay, so that's it. She's all mixed up, ready to go. So let's feed this big girl. Okay, so the way I feed may be a little bit different than some people. I've seen uh, some videos and stuff where people feed it very slowly. I don't like to feed it slowly. I like to feed it fast. Now, I'll explain it out to you here. Now, what I like to do, and I need to get some more, is I like to cover the top of my soil with uh, pebbles, rocks. This is some old pebbles from... Uh, a fish tank that I had some fish tank gravel now what I do is I put that on top all the way around except for close to the sides I don't put any on the about an inch away from the pot I don't add any so now so that's my watering ring I never water I should say I very seldom water on purpose an inch from the outside I don't water that area now I water anywhere else is fine, but I don't water that edge. What happens is as you water it, eventually that's going to compress a little bit in that area. And then you're going to have a little bit of a lower area than the outside. So I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this is how I feed. I flood her. Okay, now we have the rocks there, so it doesn't dig holes that much down into the uh, soil. And I flood it right up until it gets to the top of that outside edge. Okay, so we got quite a puddle of water there. Now, as you can see, she's already starting to go down. Once she starts, once she gets wet, then she drops really fast. So it took a while to get started and now it is pretty much gone so by doing that the water flows out to the edge and down and saturates the whole layer and then slowly goes down 
Okay, so now we let that set for a minute and let that go down a little bit. Now you can see on the outside, you can see the water level. It's starting to get a little damp on the outside of this bag. So we're going to add some more. Now it doesn't matter where it is because I'm flooding the entire thing. So. We're going to fill it right back up and then let her drain through. Now if we watch here, we should be able to see that water line right here. Okay. Now see how the, the whole outside is soaked. Now that water line is coming down all the way around the pot. Now it's down here. And it's still dropping as this sinks down through. So now we'll let that set for uh, about a minute or so. Uh, let that all go down. Now it's down here. Okay. So we gave her, uh, it's been over half a jug already. So over half, over a gallon already. So we're going to go again. Let's fill it back up. To the top let her drain down now this should be enough she looks like she's saturated pretty good now so this should start giving me some runoff possibly now we can see a little bit on the outside I don't know if you can see it I hope you can a little bit beading on the outside there dripping down just a few drops and then it absorbs back in and works its way down through the pot now I also have my pot sitting up on risers uh, it brings it up about two inches from the pot so that way my pot is not setting directly down into the runoff I want that runoff out and I want it gone five minutes later okay so we've put in not quite all of it it's a little bit left now we can see the outside is completely saturated it's not white anymore um, now this on the outside is if you're if you're not using natural stuff you're gonna get this it's uh, the excess uh, mineral salts that as it comes through the bag and leaches out the salts will cake onto the bag uh, it's fine I suggest washing it uh, when you're done before you use it again now we can see here we got some runoff a little bit little drips coming so that's what we want. We want it dripping out the bottom. Now what, what's happening there is all the uh, nutrients that were in there from yesterday. Now the plant used everything it needed out of it. Now what was left was maybe it used all the, the P and the K, the phosphorus and the potassium. But maybe it didn't need all the nitrogen. So, so we have that nitrogen building up in the bottom if we don't drain it through so what we do here is basically we're flushing this every day we're taking all the old stuff the built up salts the nitrogen and we're pushing that down the bottom that's what's dripping out and what's left is all fresh nutrients so it has all fresh nutrients every day okay so we're getting a little bit of runoff there that's going to take a good five to ten minutes uh, probably a good five minutes for that all to leach out whatever extra that it has in there so we'll come back in five minutes I'll show you how I get rid of it 8.01 p.m. okay guys so it's been about five minutes and uh, the dripping has slowed down quite a bit now we're left with uh, yeah, probably half a liter or so of water down in the uh, into the drip tray so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna use I just have a, a wet back here that I use. Now, some days if I'm really busy or just don't have the time to do it, I will leave the water in there for a couple of days. It's quite a big tray, so it's got enough room to take runoff for two or three days before I have to get rid of it. Now, so, and basically it's as simple as vacuuming it out.
Okay guys, so that's how you water the runoff. And that is my mix and that's what I use on all of my plants. Um, except for the organic grow that I have going right now. That's a whole new ball game. So that's my method, how I do it. Uh, everybody has a different method. So if you have a method that you like and it works for you, that's great. Uh, if you want to give this a try, that's great too. It's totally up to you. So anyway, the Gorilla Glue is looking fantastic. A couple more weeks and she's ready to come down. So really excited about that. And I want to give a shout out uh, to someone. Uh, she is, she's been following me for quite a while now. Uh, she's a Patreon member, my very first Patreon subscriber. So, and she's also the first one to send me a letter of thanks. So. Uh, I really appreciate that. She also added some seeds that she had gotten, so I'm anxious to try them out too. Uh, so anyway, just a big shout out to youth stuck in the 80s. Uh, I really appreciate it. Okay guys, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Uh, check out all the links I have down there for my uh, most of the equipment that I use. There's also a link to my Patreon if you want to check that out. Okay guys, happy growing and we'll see you on the next one.